<laughs> right, so yeah, um, hello everyone, thanks for turning up for, for this chat. Um, we are going to talk about kind of accessibility on general, why it's important and how we're going to start working this in um, to essentially your, your workflow so nothing ever impacts on, on anything there. Now before we talk, um, really I'd like to just have a quick hand, it's the only time it will be audience participation. Um, so hands up if you're a developer, designer, content writer, agency owner, accessibility fan. <laughs> Perfect. You guys are my favourite. Um, so to kind of give you a bit of a background about myself, um, yeah, I've worked in local government for a very long time. Um, I was able to kind of use all of my knowledge in that and actually bring that into, um, into Hex Productions. Um, in all honesty, accessibility is flipping great, in all honesty. It's not only going to help you from making sure that you are including everyone into your website, into your mobile applications, but independently you're bringing that into a bit of an SEO strategy as well. If a screen reader can read your content, so can Google. So if you are having a little bit of trouble, really emphasize that point. Um, I've got a background of procuring um, kind of content management systems, so we're actually have a good um, understanding of it is the content management system that helps, but it's also a lot of things that you need to put into your workflow to allow your content to be accessible. Uh, and currently we're working with the GDS at the moment to actually help implement EU legislation into mobile and app um, accessibility. Um, and on that point, you've got till the 29th, please, please, please submit any, in, in, um, any um, consultation with, um, comments that you may have about how to make public bodies websites accessible. <coughs> to kind of give you a good idea of an inaccessible website, there you go. Some people will not see anything on their web page, they will not hear anything on a web page. So when you're developing something or, or designing or even thinking about a web page, sometimes this is the response that they're going to get, absolutely nothing. So we really need to make sure that any website that you create is for everyone. Um, so there's quite a few things that you can kind of think about. Obviously we've just looked at sight on there. Um, you could also think about things like hearing impairment. What happens if um, someone is look, uh, was reading your video um, but you can't actually see any of the subtitles? Um, they may also just be on a bus and they don't want to actually have their um, audio being displayed. So again, subtitles is a brilliant way of stopping that. Audio doesn't work. That's a one. Um, so yeah, by putting things on like subtitles is extremely useful. So it's little things like this that you can start working into your content to actually allow it to work. One thing I would highly recommend doing, and I didn't have time to put in this presentation, if you Google frozen audio description, if you've got children, maybe don't do it with them because they'll want to watch that film again and again and again. But have a look at the trailer with their audio described. It is fantastic and it's certainly something that will really help you push things forward. When you're thinking about people with a disability, you're thinking about one in five people in the UK. Now, if your website's inaccessible, one in five people cannot access the information on your website. And we all don't think that that is right. If you think about this in a real world example, um, it's a beautiful family, kind of randomly picked at uh, random in there. But there's five people in this, in this um, screen. Now, not one of them has declared themselves as being disabled. But you've got four people in that screen that require glasses. You have three people that do have a mild case of dyslexia. You've got two people that have very short attention spans and one person that is elderly. Now all of those aspects and all of those um, kind of ideas of people or, or those, those characteristics of people actually require you to think about how your content is on a website or a mobile device. If you think about my sister, she uses the phone all of the time, no matter where you are, time of day, she'll be on her phone. Now, today's a lovely, beautiful day. What happens if her screen is being impaired because there is a bright light of sun on her screen? She can't read her content. So, again, thinking of other ways to have that content read out to them or allow them to actually start to in consume that information without the need of um, kind of relying on just text on the screen. If we think about the population of Northern Ireland, 1.81 million, 
roughly give or take. Um, and if we use the one in five statistic, that's 362,000 people registered as disabled. So potentially, this amount of people cannot view a web page because you've not gone through the proper process to try and find out why it is inaccessible. So we plan, we design, we develop, we put our life and soul into building things. But we're not thinking about everyone while we do that. Now there could be many reasons why we aren't doing that. Knowledge is a key one. Now we're still learning um, as an agency. We've partnered up with the Shore Trust to actually bring more knowledge into this. I do not have a, uh, a visual impairment. I have glasses to help me see um, when I'm looking at distances. But you've got someone like Alan, who is completely blind, requires a screen reader to actually go through that whole website. I can't replicate that. I can close my eyes and try using the JAWS system, but actually having that knowledge and having that expertise will help us move that forward. And as an agency, any website that we produce will be accessible from a AA and AAA standard. And we're using the knowledge from Shortrust to make sure that anything we produce follows that. The one thing we will talk about a lot today is time. Time is not an excuse. Time is something that we can always make for. Time is something that is just that we've not workflowed it properly. So think about every step. The client who's got a fan of a client that always wants a logo just that little bit more bigger or they, they really want a website to pop out of the screen. Um, in all honesty, if you should be building, designing or creating websites, accessibility should always be in your mind. You should always be developing or designing a website that is accessible. It should happen for them automatically. They will always fall back to you and say, well, it's going to cost me more money if it's going to be accessible. Um, you may think as a designer, a developer, or an agency owner, that it's going to cost you more money to do that. But again, it's thinking about how your workflow is in, in place to, to make sure that everything that you do is just flowing the normal flow. If the client is really adamant that, right, you, I've got no money, you can't make this website accessible, Think about a, a very orange airline that have very decent fares. Um, they've got on their website that you know nearly half a million people are registered disabled use their flight services. If you think about that from an average fare, it's definitely didn't pay that to come over here, um, but an average fare is roughly about £90. So if they couldn't service those people on a website, on their application, that's a hell of a lot of money that they're losing. And it's little things like that that we can easily put into our briefs, our, com our conversations with clients, to actually show them what they are missing out on. But that's the client. You know, think about your everyday life. How many times have you missed a bin collection and needed to kind of contact the council to say, can you come and pick it back up again? A lot of website forms are inaccessible. Labels are in done incorrectly. Maybe the colour contrast is incorrect. If you think of everything that you do on a day-to-day -day level, you're going to think, like, there's a lot of people here that can't actually use the content, they can't consume anything. So really have a think about that, and then take those real-world examples to your client. And the way that we looked at this is we saw that um, there was a need. You know, we needed to start making websites uh, that are fully accessible for everyone. So we did, we partnered with the Short Trust. A few of us went down to Neath to actually witness one of our councils actually being completely audited. We were able to sit back and actually witness this. Um, so we had a lot of different uh, disabilities being shown to us and actually how the websites would actually start being put together. Uh, the team were fantastic, they really welcomed us, they really opened our eyes up to kind of different ways of, of doing things. Um, and these are real people. You know, we use um, personas all of the time in the work that we do. But hands up if you actually use a persona that actually has a disability or has something that, that has um, a way of not using a web page efficiently. You know, we don't think about this. So we use real people to actually find out what they're doing and how they're using their websites to, to make sure that it is working right for them. So how can we do it? How can we help um, our clients? How can we help people that are visiting the web pages to do that? Everything starts here. That very first meeting, that very first client interaction that you have, be it an email, a phone call, a face-to-face -face meeting, everything gets brought up here. 
you tell them why you're making your website accessible. You're telling them what we're doing to make sure that we're doing that. This may not just be with a client. This can be your team, your third party providers, your freelancers that you might be using. Anyone that's part of your project should be brought in for accessibility right at the start. We try to go to a content uh, management provider. Uh, they wanted us to help them with accessibility. They said, great, come and talk to us when it's 80% done and we'll start talking about accessibility. Think of how many things have gone wrong since then. Think of how many times that they've had a question but they've just not thought about it so they've done display none, we've hidden it straight away. Everything should be considered right at the start. Once you move that on, then start to think about the wireframes. So even though you're not putting any colour to the screen, what you're doing is you're starting to get the layout right. Is there a carousel or a slider being involved in here? Are videos being used? Yes, fantastic. So how is that going to be displayed on the screen reader? So when a slide moves, are you still reading the content? Does the person have control of the slider? Does the video autoplay? Things like this you really have to consider. And things that we always look at, and I have to thank you very much for bringing this up yesterday but during the contribute today. The, the alleyproject.com checklist is fantastic. When you start wireframing, check this out, because it will give you a couple of points of where you can actually start, be it roles, be it um, uh, certain areas. It's something that is definitely worth just making a little note. So when it goes to your designer or your developer, you'll then be able to start working with them on that. And then moving on into the design phase, they're aware of what's gone on. They're aware of what we're doing, what we're trying to achieve, and how we're trying to achieve it. So start thinking with them and start talking to the developers. Make sure there's a nice flow with everyone talking, because this will help them. Good things they can really concentrate on are things like color contrast. So color contrast is massive. Um, you need to make sure that you are differentiating certain parts. So here we've got a, a, an example of a colorblind test. Um, there's a number in there. Some people in this room will be able to see it, and some people won't be able to see it. So what we need to do as designers and developers is make sure that we find ways that they can differentiate. So the things you can try are the color contrast checker. So this is what was our corporate orange, and this was our corporate background on our website. And we found out that we failed every single time. So by making an extremely small change to the foreground color, we've then become pretty much accessible on heading text. And yes, we're very not very good on the normal text, but it's very little chance that we're going to be using that. But if you just look at the lightness and the difference between the two that we're using, that is a minor difference. That is very, very small. But I'll tell you what, that is making a world of difference to a lot of people. Um, a quick one to go on, um, the resource color contrast checker. Please give it a go. You can put in hex codes. Um, if you have a Mac or an Instagram, anything, there are kind of color droppers that you can pick up and use, and there are apps. All of these links will be available, so we'll make sure that you all have access to all of these as well. Um, we use Trello on a second by second basis, it feels like. I always get notifications up. But they have labels. And the way that they've worked on colour contrast is actually putting in patterns to allow people to differentiate between the different colours within there. So it's not just a case of making sure that you're only using um, completely opposite colours. You're actually putting patterns into that as well. And because everything that you've done, everyone's been part of this, you can then pass this over to, to the developers. You've got your wireframes, you know where you're going to be using certain roles, you know where you're going to be using certain other items. And then what it will be now is they'll just be putting those final touches on things. They'll be making sure that you've got skip links in there. You'll make sure that you've got the right areas, the right links in the right places because it's all been wireframed. It's all been thought about. The design has all been there for you. One of our biggest, biggest bugbears um, are these beautiful things. Uh, everyone wants social links. Everyone wants using something like Font Awesome or maybe another icon font. Now, if you use something like SVGs, fantastic. You can put a title in there. You can get the text being read out to you. But if you have kind of the standard font awesome font, that's great. It's being displayed on the screen. Now, if you put a web link in there, you'd think, right, on a screen reader, that needs to be read out. But the problem is, they're not going to read anything. There's no text in there whatsoever stating that this is a link to something. So by putting just a hidden area in here that's not being displayed from the, the front end, it's being just displayed in the code, 
it's allowing you to say what the link is doing. So someone like Alan, who uses a screen reader, will actually hear visit Facebook, and they know that they'll be going to the Facebook web page. See, you taking a photo. I won't change it. <laughs> <laughs> and from the front end, everything looks the same. Nothing's changed. So your styles, you're going to keep your designers happy. You're going to keep the, the initial colline happy as well because it's still going to be looking exactly the same. Now, I've rambled on quite a bit. Um, now, I'd like you guys to actually see or hear this in action. So we're going to welcome Alan up to the screen to give you a quick introduction. And then what we're going to do is go through how a screen reader uses and it hurt me to do it, a very bad accessible web page and how the difference it looks from an accessible and a good web page. Now we're going to do this on the screen. If you want to see Alan's keys and how they're using, if you want to visit horlicks.com slash uh, live a 11 y we're going to try and set up a bit of a live streaming as well. So on your phones or on your laptops you'll be able to see what Alan is actually typing while you can see this being done on the screen as well. Uh, so just give us a couple of minutes and we'll just get this set up. Um, so, afternoon. Um, is it on the screen now? Yeah? Yeah. Right, yeah. Right. So, on the screen, you've got a site that James has um, put together um, all about cheese. Um, this is his um, bad site for accessibility. Um, in a moment, we'll show you how the, the better one or the good one looks. Okay? So, please take note. Hopefully there shouldn't be any change visually. Um, now, James obviously said you can watch my hands and how drawers works. Um, but think about like virtual reality. If you want to, close your eyes. Okay, be in my virtual reality. And um, hear what I see. Because sometimes the sight and um, the hearing sort of overtakes. Um, but I'll leave that up to you. Um, right, so with um, JAWS I use a lot of shortcut keys to navigate around a page. Now we've got to remember <coughs> is for a screen reader, they only hear where the cursor lands. Nothing around the outside, or to the left, or to the right, or any direction. So it's just literally where the cursor lands is what I hear. Okay, now just Okay, so I'm just going to refresh the page, pretending that I've just gone through it by a, a Google link or something. That's fine, isn't it? Okay, so when James sent me this initially, it did make me sit back in my chair. So I hope I can test it. Okay, so it's with an initial link ready. F5. Some content you might want to read cheese and oh, very okay. like all cheeses, mozzarella starts from milk of labor. To assure that the Okay, so we've got contrast here of jaws talking and the video. After being the problem is I can't hardly hear anything or could you hear me? Okay, so we've got some short bit things which you guys look at it before. Hopefully I can go straight to it. Raw milk of real cheese making contains 3.8% fat and 3.8% they store the milk in a milk Oh, thank you for that. Okay, so it's taken me a few minutes or seconds to find out where pause is and to actually pause the video so I can operate my um, screen user, uh, re screen reader, sorry, to navigate around the page. Now, the first thing I normally do when I get to a page is look for headings. Now headings will, um, for a screen reader, minimise how much information is on a screen. If you think of a newspaper, you've got a heading and then you've got um, different text size or font size to each um, sub um, story. And your eyes can visually go to that story you want, could be at the bottom of the page, and then go to that page to get more information from it. Um, that is just like a web page hopefully with headings, but if you imagine you have got no headings, <laughs> it would be like looking at a newspaper, all the same font, same colour, all the way down. And what I'll have to do then is listen to the whole page. Now, we've only got a, a small page here, but if you imagine a bigger site, where you've got 20, 30 pages, to get to the information you actually want, it's going to be quite difficult. 
Um, so I have got a shortcut key which um, brings down all the um, headings and hopefully Heading list dialog. Heading list view. More videos. Colon two. One of one. Take that. Remove the item. Here. Here. <laughs> YouTube video. Oh, is it? Mm. Oh. Okay. So. More videos. Colon two. One of one. So there, because <laughs> James Chain said there's no uh, headings there, but we have got one, which is the YouTube video. But I've got nothing else. So am I now thinking? Is there any other content on the page? or is it just videos? Okay, because if I've got that, then I can quickly jump to that information. If I get my keys ready. Enter, heading level two more videos, YouTube okay. video. So it's down to the YouTube video. Link how to make cheddar cheese, Gavin Weber, how to make cheddar cheese left and there. And if I want to know how to make cheddar cheese, I'm there. Okay, <laughs> anything else, it doesn't matter. Okay, but obviously on a website, you can have your details in, contact details. You're going to have different um, information about cheeses um, on here, or to go to other people's websites that are perhaps sponsoring you or allowing you to advertise on there. So headings are a really good um, tool for a screen reader. Okay. Now we heard a little bit um, of the form fields. Again, look into making a contact now. James on his site has put not just any contact details, but he's actually got somewhere we can sign up to have alerts or um, a newsletter, which again is for somebody who's <laughs> doing a site, is going to be really good to keep in contact with that person who's visiting. But the headings, they've got no information there about how to keep in contact. Um, Select so the form field dialogue. List one, list view. Watch later button. One of 18. Okay. To move the item view with the arrow keys. Share next button, close button, seek slider, play button, mute button, unlabel one slider, 100% lock button. So I've got a button, which, this is button. If you've got your eyes shut, then you haven't got a clue what it's going to do. Settings menu, full screen button, name edit, email edit, name so I've edit. I've got name, which, okay, it's a name. I don't know what I'm signing up for, but it's a name. Email edit. Email. Radio button not checked. Okay, and I'm not checking. Uh, something, uh, check, a button I'm not checked. Radio button not checked. But I haven't got a clue what am I signing up for. Or is it to allow other sites that we've heard today to have that information? Um, is it um, allowing people to share certain information? So I may be going down there clicking it and not really knowing what it is. As um, Caps lock on. Caps lock off. Uh, Escape. I YouTube can also video. navigate individually. I don't have to use the jewels list. Name edit. So it's got name. Email edit. Email. Wrapping the top. Name edit. Wrapping email top. edit. Right. So email. Radio button not checked. HTML. Okay. So I've got to go down Radio there. button not checked. Not checked is actually HTML. For HTML. What for? I don't know. Radio button not checked. Plain text. Plain text. So I want something over either <coughs> HTML or plain text. Now is that for the email? Is that for a newsletter? I've got to start guessing. Something else that comes on websites that uh, perhaps is more of a debate on the people who are blind or visually impaired is the use of graphics. Um, now graphics are good for myself. I lost my sight when I was 28. Um, but I've got some memory of uh, images. You know, things that happen in life. So it'll bring a website to life. But what we've got here, hopefully. Select the graphic dialogue. List one, list view. Hello Belf. Cheap. Hello Belfast. Hello Belfast. Okay, now I can work that out as Hello Belfast. Okay. <laughs> the only difference there really, again, is it's not even taking time. The only part thing is that James hasn't built a space between Hello and Belfast. Now that's an easier one to work out. Some aren't. I have to go over it key by key. Cheese dash photo dot jpg. Okay, so we've got cheese dash photo jpg. Well, okay, it's cheese. Right, fine. We're just a little bit better than I did suggest. <laughs> some websites you go to and there's um, graphics on there which are just numbered. This has got some numbers there. Now the problem there is I don't know whether I'm missing something. 
Is it an instruction? Is it something that's going to be important information behind? It's left that me wondering why it's going to happen there. Enter list one, list zero, cheese dash photo. Okay, but I, I do know it's a, a cheese photo, and it's got a lot of information after it. Which cheese do you like? Okay, which cheese do I like? Red, cauliflower, cheese, homage, phrase carefully, hard cheese, cheeseburger, hard cheese, Monterey, Jack, homage, oh, okay, cheese, okay. Ryan, so well. cheese, and biscuits, So they're jabbering along. Okay, what's really there, it should be a list. Okay. Uh, a great sort of example that I, I taught somebody is is your list when you go shopping chocolate buttons okay so do you get chocolate buttons from Cadbury's or do you get two items chocolate and some buttons for whatever you need buttons <coughs> for okay so the screen reader is just listing or reading a whole sentence which should be actually a list so much phrase of that blend. Okay. So the exam. Um, we've also, you, you heard the uh, video. Um, again, just select the, the form field here. dialog. List one, list view. Watch later, P. Play button. The play. Enter YouTube video player. Okay, Some sometimes. examples of cheese. Oh yeah, sorry. Product, it is a silence. Each uh, with the capacity of 25,000 There's nowhere to actually pause or there's just a combination of buttons. This milk separator extracts Select surplus cream. So again, show you the beginning. According to the type of cheese. Again, because I can even use the initial letter, it's not too bad. However, if I've got about five videos to play, and obviously play and pause are the same initial letter, it's going to take me a long time to get there. How would you have time? Yeah, if you'd like to change that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now I hope they're going to change, so if I delete this, it would be... Yeah. Oh, yeah? Alt F4. Alt Tab. Alt Tab. Desktop. Alt Tab. Website or LS dash Microsoft Word. Website or good example. Now hopefully... I thought you were... Link. Yeah. Good example. Enter. Give me one to your options key. Or I can click it if you want. Oh. oh. Yeah, go ahead. I see, I thought it was good to that, sure. Microsoft Word yeah. dialog. Enable to open HTTPS colon slash slash orlicks dot com slash A11 adult. Technological wonderful thing. Main print new edit. Internet Explorer. <coughs> Escape. Refresh the page. Address and search using the net. A cheesy example of good. A cheesy example of good A11. Y page has one frame, two regions, six headings, and eight links. Okay. I'll Quite good. There's a button there that just turns drills off, so we've got enough. Um, so what we're going to do is just go over now the good example um, to assist screen readers. Okay. So as we said before, we've got the first time to go on there. Going to look for headings. Heading list dialog. Heading list view. Hello Belfast Word Camp Belfast colon one one of six. Okay. So we've got heading level one. So when I activate that, it should go straight to the main information on this page, which obviously is saying hello to yourselves. Some content you might okay. want to read, colon two. Content you want to read is self-explanatory. I know when I go into that heading, I'm going to get the information I want underneath. A wedge of Swiss cheese ready to be eaten. Which cheese do you like, colon two? Okay. Some examples of cheese, colon three. Contact us, colon two. Okay, now we've got the better bit first, the developers, and now you've got to contact us, so I could go straight there. Fancy a slice of our newsletter, colon three. And then there's the newsletter. Okay, so again, I can just ignore, in a way, the rest of the page, and quickly jump to that and think, all right, that's what I want to do, get the newsletter. Escape, a cheesy example of good A11Y. Okay. Links. Links list dialog, links list view, skip the... Okay, now, now I've got a uh, links label. We didn't go over that on the bad example, but I can uh, just show you on the good one. But skip the content. Skip the content. That normally means that uh, on every page you go on your, your page, there's going to be the um, duplicated sort of home, contact us, links at the top. Depending on how many you've got there, or it's the, how the distance from the top to your main content. Now if you've got a skip um, link, it would, or should, 
skip the user all the way down to the main information. Alternatively, a screen reader can use the number one to jump to the heading level one, or as you've seen um, or heard, going up to the headings list and finding that hello bell first. Accessibility statement. Okay, the next one down, the, a link accessibility statement. Uh, two things here, the accessibility statement should give um, confidence to people who use assistive technology to um, know that your site is helping them. So they've got that confidence of going all through your, the procedures and actually get into the end product. Um, along with helpful hints that perhaps they've not known before, especially if they've just started using assistive technology, things like the PDFs and other documents. Um, lots of times when we <coughs> test the site, the accessibility link is normally, or sometimes, at the bottom of the page. Now, uh, for myself, I think, well, if there's something there that's going to help somebody, don't you want it the first one or two links you're at? You know, for myself, I don't want to have the information if I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom. I I've been there, I've done it already. Okay. Download our cheese making PDF left bracket 200 KB right bracket left. Okay, so there's a PDF uh, file there. Um, on the bad one, it wasn't labeled as a PDF, it's just a link. This one, it's telling the user uh, whether you're a screen reader or... Can you see it visually? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, visually, um, that it's PDF, you know what document you're opening, and the size. Um, it's giving the, all the information there to anybody who wants to take note of that, um, or if they want to open it and realize that's up to them. Signing up for our expert course left parent external link right parent. Okay, so we got there signing up for our expert. Not signing up for our expert cor course. Okay, now James has link, um, put uh, uh, information alongside. Again, can you see it visually? No. No. Okay, so it's not visual, but for a screen reader it's allowing them to know that when activating that link is going to go to a new window. Now, you might think, well, why is that important? The importance is that somebody might go then on that uh, new window, go to the home link and think they're coming back on your home page. If they're not realising they're actually on a different site. There, there you may lose your client, your visitor. Okay, but there you're giving them the information to know how to navigate back to your um, site or to delete the one they're on, which automatically will go back to yours. Oh, it's me, Colin. Okay, now hopefully we, that the links label correctly, giving the direction to the screen reader what information is going to happen or what you're going to get when you activate that link. So let's have a look at this graphic. Select the graphic hopefully. dialog. Alleged work can Belfast. Okay, well, hello, it's welcome and um, Belfast there. Okay. A wedge of Swiss cheese ready to be eaten. Okay, so that one is uh, exactly the same graphics, but it's a bit more descriptive. It's, uh, it's telling me what sort of cheese it is. Um, Enter. Now, now, we did have a discussion last night and said that perhaps somebody who's been blind since birth is not necessarily going to remember what image that is in their head. But there must be some other, in my opinion, sense of how Swiss cheese tasted or smelt and I think I'm sure it would evoke that sort of sense if they knew it was there as well. Um, so again a good description on actually what's happening um, is it, beneficial. So let's go and see if we can find how to um, sign up for the uh, list dialogue. slice of cheese. A wedge of Swiss cheese red. Fancy a slice of our cut. Fancy a slice of our enter. Heading level. Your details. Okay, so we've got your, your details. Name. Name. Required edit. Which is required. Email. Email is required. Okay. Required edit. Required edit. Required. Required edit. D. Dot Hartman. Required edit. Demo color one. Required edit. Graham dot read. Required edit. Graham dot okay, so read. Okay, so there's another one in there. Escape mode. Exactly. Okay. Right. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay. So that gives you a, a brief sort of 
um, outline on this is one page um, on first the experience of an inaccessible website that's going to hinder somebody who wants to visit your site and keep on them being interested. The second part it shows how by a few adjustments and labelling and even just by putting space in the labelling will assist um, somebody who can't see and um, allow them to stay on your site and you know, ex uh, improve their experience and hopefully come back. Okay? Well, thank you very much, Alan. <laughs> hopefully you found that as it is just, um, it really is kind of jaw dropping when you actually see this actually in place. Um, so just a few things to sum up. Um, so like I say, putting this into your workflow, until you see this actually happening, we find it very hard to actually um, start to move things forward. So things that is worth going back to actually start implementing into maybe some of your code. Please have a look at the, the ARIA website to allow you to add extra information to maybe some of the code that you develop. Um, so for example, if you add something to a basket, then it's great if you find out something's been added to a basket, but from a screen reader's point of view, how do they know what's been activated? So things like ARIA Live is extremely um, exciting from, from a code point of view. You, you can actually program your shopping cart to read out that maybe one item has been booked, uh, maybe the seats number, the cost, everything will be read out to them and you've not done anything extra, you just put this little um, label into some of your code and it's allowing the screen reader to be read out. So extremely useful. There, there are so many of these little labels to have a look at. Please take your time and have a good look through them. Um, Wave is brilliant. It's a very good automated tool. So when you go through some of your checks with maybe some of your designers or your developers, using something like Wave on a Chrome or Firefox plugin all actually on this web page, it will quickly highlight some of the issues, heading structure, colour contrast issues, um, uh, forms not being correctly labelled. Um, very, very good, very quick, very easy to use. Uh, Site Improve uh, also do uh, a Chrome extension that does exactly the same thing. But this will actually link you to the WCAG guidelines that you're actually failing at the moment. So rather than just seeing what the error is, it will help you educate and actually start finding out why this is an issue. Um, but yeah, soon as you again, I know these links, these links go pretty quick, I'll tweet them out, you can get out, use them as much as you can afterwards. <coughs> and that's it from us. Thank you very much, guys.